Education is the heart and soul of the Sanvia brand as we stand before you for the love of education. Whether it's through live education or maybe through social media, we're always trying to make a personal connection with you, the learner. Our contributions in education will be our legacy in this age. At Sandia, our smile is our logo and our personality is our business card. And how you feel when you walk away after an educational experience is our trademark. The heart of Sandia is education. Join our journey, my friends, and we will change your life behind the chair. Happy Monday to you all, and welcome to Mannequin Monday. If you are here with us this morning, and please pop into the chat where you're watching from so we know who's watching with us. And uh, many of you out there are big Sam Via fans. You would love to have hands on education. Guess what? You can bring the Sam Via art team into your salon, live and hands on. Head to samvia.com backslash education. That has the full catalog of what you can bring into your salon, who you can bring into your salon, and how you make that happen. And if you are a Sanvia lover, guess what? You can actually earn some money by using the tools. You can join the Sanvia affiliate program. Again, head to samvia.com for more information on that. You get a 20% commission anytime someone uses your affiliate code, plus they get an additional 10% discount. And you know, kind of the cool thing about that discount is that's on top of our previously discounted prices. So if Sanvia is doing a special, they get an extra 10% and then you get a 20% kickback. So pretty cool, right? Today, we have the awesome Jamie McDaniel joining us. Jamie has been in all sides of our industry for the last decade as a hairdresser and also as a traveling educator. She is a Redken artist, a Sam ambassador, and she loves to connect with stylists from all over through the common bottom of education. Jamie draws, edu or sorry, draws her inspiration and her education from editorial finishing, special occasion work, and also strong design skills. So you're going to get to see all of that in action today. So please welcome the awesome Jamie McDaniel, all the way from St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> you with us, Jamie? Jamie. Hello? Uh-oh. Let's try that again. Jamie, are you there? Jamie, can you hear me? <laughs> uh, we had some technical difficulties this morning, so uh, hang tight. We're going to try and get Jamie on here. Jamie, can you hear us? Hello, Jamie? Hang tight, friends. Hello, Jamie? <laughs> Hello, hello. I'm going to just start talking. I do have to apologize. We've been having some storms here in St. Louis and the internet has been a little wonky. So I'm just going to get right into it. Hello, my name is Jamie McDaniel and I am based out of St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and I am so excited to talk with you guys about this beautiful um, high bun bridal style. Um, my inspiration for this actually comes from watching the Pamela Anderson documentary on Netflix. If anybody's seen it, give me that's a give me a hey hey in the chat box. It was one of her most iconic looks in the '90s, where where she piled everything on top of her head and had that really kind of loose organicness to her. I mean, I'm a child, I graduated in the early 2000s, so anything that we can pile on our head and make it look like a pineapple too, like we were all about. So being able to create something that has a little bit more refinement to it 
and a little bit more elegance is always going to be fun for me. And this is just a nice little um, demo that I have for us. As you can see, the on-trendness of having something still down in the face is really nice. However, this is also perfect for anyone that has like a curtain fringe or a fringe that they're growing out. Even if they have a full fringe, this will still be perfect for them as well. So as we go through this, I just kind of want to talk about where trends have been with bridal styles. And a lot of bridal styles have been super low in the nape, right? We have a lot of buns right here in that nape area. I'll show you on here. That sit really lo uh, low down here, and then we were getting some volume through here through some pieciness or backcombing. The great thing about this look is that there will be no backcombing I should say minimal backcombing involved, so we don't have to worry about um, trying to like make sure it doesn't look like a rat's nest or anything like that. So, Andrew, I'm going to have you pull up that first head form for me of the back of the head. The first thing that I did through here is we want to talk about prepping. So when I was prepping this mannequin, I went through and I used a root lift from Redken uh, on dry hair. And once I had that all worked through, I went through and I gave it a nice blow dry through. What that's going to do is it's just gonna give me a little bit of tack through that hair. So whenever I go to start working with it, it's not silk, it's more like cotton or if I did like a couple applications, it can feel a little bit more like wool. And whenever I go to work for it, it's not just slipping out of my hands like silk would. So we have a nice little diagram for us of now what we've moved into is the iron curl set. I don't know about you, but setting hair sometimes can be lengthy, right? And so what I've gone through and done is I've really just gone through and compressed this down. So in that head form, you'll see the back of the head, we have these two side pieces. Let me give you a better shot. And I've curled them into the hair, not towards the face, but into the hair, because this is the way that the hair is going to be moving. As we move on to the side here, this hair will also be moving towards, uh, excuse me, off the face, so I curled it off the face. In the fringe area, I'm just gonna let that hang and be, because usually we want that to be the softest of a curl. We want the 90s, but we don't want the ringlets around the face kind of 90s. So this is my section that I have in the front half. And as you can see from that diagram, I've gone through and I've used a lot of zigzags. So zigzags are great because they're going to create some diffusion for me. So whenever I go to pull things back, it's not going to be like a hard block. Andrew, thank you. I'm good with that diagram. So let's go in here and start working with this hair. Let me lower. So I'm going to go through and apply it. A thermal protectant. This is going to be Redkin's Thermal Set 11. And I love this because it's going to give me hold, hold plus heat protection. So I'm just going to go through and spray that on and work through with my Sambia single tail comb that product. Moving all of this hair towards the face first. I have a good grip on it. Now I'm going to come through with my Sambia 2-in-1 curling iron. One inch. You can absolutely use the one and a half inch if you'd like. But since my sections are so big, the one inch is perfect. So coming through here, hot tip before you close, wrap that hair around the uh, barrel and then close the clamp. Now my barrel is going to match my section in which it moves. So I'm at a diagonal section, so my barrel will be at a diagonal section. And now I'm just going to feed that hair all the way up there. This mannequin's haircut, I think haircut is a super important to talk about whenever we're talking about upstyling. This one has lots of layers and face framing around their face. 
So I really want to make sure that my curl starts in the middle so I can grab all those hairs around the face and works all the way down to those ends. Now I can start working that all the way up. Hold it there for a little bit until it gets nice and warm and then let go. Now while it's still warm, I'm going to take the wide tooth, different camera angle, <laughs> of my Sambia comb and just work that loosely. This is just going to soften it up for me and with three fingers come through and just start wrapping it around. So I went in with the one inch two-in-one Sambia curling iron and now I'm utilizing three fingers to roll this up and pin it in place. The bigger the section is going to help me with a little bit more of the looseness in the curl and then utilizing three fingers to wrap the hair around is also going to loosen up that curl for me. Now let's move to this top section. This top section is going to be where we're really just kind of kind of set it on base. Going through with our thermal protectant again and combing that through to make sure that's even distribution. And you can really see how big my section is right now. It's a lot of hair. This is probably about a good two inch to three inches wide. And then in the back, I'm probably a good four inches across. So don't be afraid. The great thing about these curling irons, Sambia's curling irons, is that you have a longer barrel to it. So don't be afraid to really use a bigger section. All right, coming through, same thing. I need a turner. And wrapping that hair around the barrel before I close the clamp. Now I'll just simply kick these tails to the side and just start wrapping it around. I like to personally hold them so they don't fall out and guide them in. All the way to those ends and then just wrap on in. The bigger these sections are, the better too, because in our final end results, we're piling everything on top of the head. So to keep it a little bit more organic, a little bit more modern and up to date, I don't want them too curly. But as you'll see in the end, as we're working through and piling it on, it really helps guide us and makes our pinning life a little easier. So wide tooth comb. Spread it on out, comb it out, three fingers, and then I'm just going to wrap that around. Once I'm done here, I'm going to pin in place. Now I've been using just single prong pins, but you can also go in with your Sambia no pin clips and clip that right into place. Let's do it this way. Put that right into place. I'm very right hand dominant. <laughs> and you can see that that will sit in there nicely. The great thing about those is, is since it is still warm, you're not going to get that crease in there. So this is the final, what the final iron set will look like whenever you're working through the hair. So real quick in the chat box, what was the first thing that I did to prep the hair? I sprayed a certain root lift in there and then I used a what? It starts with a blow and ends with a dryer. <laughs> through the hair to really get that hair nice and tacky. Then I came through and I sprayed on a thermal protectant from Redken and I worked that through and I used the Sambia. What kind of iron did I use in there? Go ahead and put that in the chat box. What kind of iron did I work with when setting in the curls? Yeah, the two in one Sambia one inch curling iron. I'm so sorry, I did not see that comment. I saw it pop up. Do you mind throwing that back up there for me? 
Good morning. I love the education you all provide. We love Canada, okay? Thank you so much for joining us. All right, so moving forward. Now let's get into the fun part. We're going to start to work this hair. And Andrew, there's another diagram of the top of the head. If you don't mind pulling that up for me, I'd love that. However, I'm also going to show it on the screen here. And this is the top of the head. So I've already gone through and I've brushed everything out, but now I have this section here that sets right on top of the head. And again, I'm working with zigzags. So this is going to help create diffusion. Don't get wrapped up on having perfect little zigzags. Just go through and make a good zigzag. The more organic we are about it, the better. All right, Andrew, thank you so much for that diagram. So coming in with my single tail comb again, this is what I went through and I used my zigzags for. I'm actually going to make two more sections for us before we start uh, designing this up style. So I'm coming through right ever, slightly behind, or excuse me, right on top of the ear. If I were to draw a line down, it will be the ear. Now I'm going to come through with my zigzag and my single tail and just make a zigzag down. I'm doing a little rough draft here. So I actually want this to come a slight bit further back behind the ear. So come through here and zigzag again and that's perfect. So you can see I have a diagonal back zigzag, zigzag that ends at the back of the hair. Do you do a zigzag before curling? Yes, all my zigzags for my curling were, uh, excuse me, all my curls, my sections for my curls were zigzagged as well. Great question. So there we are. Coming in with my Sanvia no bend clips and just clipping that out, out of my way for right now. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So in the chat box, tell me where I started again. I started on top of what reference? Yeah, I started on top of the ear. I'm also starting right at where that ponytail ends, right? So I'm going to start at the top of the ear, but right where that ponytail ends as well. And then placing my finger right behind the ear, I'm going to go through and do a nice little zigzag. This is a little rough draft. If it works out, fantastic. If I want to create a little bit more deeper of a zigzag, I can. So I'll just go through and scoop that out and add it to my hand. Or just redo the zigzag and go deeper. Perfect. Now coming through, I'm placing my new bend clip. So now this front part is out of my way. I have my ponytail up top, and then I have all of this hair back here that we are going to compress into a nice little twist. This is going to continue to flop down, so I'll just take my no bend clip and just place it in there to keep it up and out of my way. When I brushed out these curls, I did set it with a little bit of brushable hairspray 12. And I came through with my Sambia paddle brush and I'm holding it vertically. And I'm just coming through and brushing out those curls. You see how nice and smooth and that will come through and brush it out. That's really what I'm looking for is I'm just gonna have this doesn't have a lot of tension when you use it vertically. So I just want to come through here and place it in my hands. Another product that I like to use when working with upstyling is an aerosol spray wax. This spray wax is fantastic because I don't know about you, but I've had a hard time in the past whenever I work with upstyles of it tends to get tacky and it tends to have a little bit of a film on it by the time you get done with it, right? When you're using it like a traditional iron spray. So the spray wax is fantastic because it gives me control 
but it still gives me pliability as well. So still coming through with my paddle brush and working this hair into my hands. Nice and soft. Here's a hot tip. I want this twist to be nice and loosey-goosey and kind of organic, but still have control and a solid base for me. So I'm going to slide my hand out and I'm actually going to start my twist further down. I'll show you why. The other hot tip is I'm going to slightly pivot towards the uh, off center, if you will, depending on which way you're twisting. So you want to pivot off center depending on if you're twisting left or right. So slide out, pivot, and now I'm going to start to roll this up. Wrong way. Sorry. There we go. Now, as you can see, this is going to end up centered, but since I started further down, now when I'm coming up, It will just be, why do I keep on twisting that way? You guys ever do that? Now it'll sit nice and tight for me, but here we go. Just to make this a little bit more organic, if you will, I'm just gonna come through and pinch. I need to have some grip on it, but if you have too tight of a grip on it, it's, you're gonna have havoc trying to pinch and pull this. So I'm just pinching and pulling a little bit out to make it a little bit smoother. Don't worry if you get too crazy with it. It's okay. There we go. Move this guy a little closer. And now I'm gonna come through and start pinning. I'm holding this top part nice and tight. It's off the head, but I still have this right on the head. Coming through with my, uh, my grips, not even opening them. I'm just going to start to place them in the hair. Grab a little. Grab a little. Touch the head. Come back. Pick up another one. Don't open it. Grab a little. Touch the head. Push back. And I'm going to do that until I feel like I am nice and secure in my twist. Remember, we set our mannequin up for success whenever we set them with blow drying our root lifter in before we started doing any of this. So I could go through there and sure back home to make sure I have enough grip for these bobby pins to go into, but that grit from the root lift was actually going to give me some tackiness for whenever I put my grips in the hair so they won't slide right out. So final right now and then I'm just gonna let these where'd you go hang out for a little bit if you're with me so far say with you in the comments all right leaving this tail B now we're gonna move to this front section left or right doesn't necessarily matter too much and then I'm going to use my pink, my finger, and I'm just going to come through here and divide it in half. And when I use my finger, I organically already get a somewhat of a zigzag part line. Have control on your work. If I'm not working with it, I'm going to get this out of my way. Now, I'm applying spray wax and come through with my wide tooth comb and work that product in. I want this again to be loose so I don't want to have it too tight. So loose, let it drape a little bit and you can see by setting it with a curling iron it's already giving me a little bit of a drape which is fantastic. Now, I'll come through and moving it all the way to the side. It 
taking my grip and I'm going to place it down, flat against the head. Let that tail hang. Let's do it again to the other side. Come through. I'm going to slip this in half with my finger to give me some organicness and control what I'm not using by clipping it out of my way. And this is the only section that I'm going to be working with right now. Utilize spray wax, comb with my wide tooth comb. These combs are fantastic too because they really, they don't snag, they just have that nice smoothness to them. And you can see with the wide grip tooth, or excuse me, the wide tooth, it's not going to give it as much fluff as what a fine tooth comb would. So come through, control, give it a little looseness to it. And now I'm going to cross over my previous section here, excuse me, my previous pin. There it is. And cross over and pin this the same way, going down, flat against the head, but on the opposite side. So I have a tail here, a tail here, and this is still hanging out. Fantastic. All right, now remember our ponytail that we used, that we already have in place from earlier. Now we're gonna start to utilize that. This ponytail is placed, here's my, here it is. This ponytail is actually placed towards the back of my round zigzag. So it's not in the middle and it's not up top. It's going to be towards the bottom, towards the back of my round zigzag. Now we're going to come through here and this mannequin head has blonde hair, but I'm going to utilize padding. I'm going to utilize brown padding. Go ahead in the comments and ask me why brown padding on blonde hair. Say why. So I'm just going to roll this up. until I have a nice little dollop, if you will. I'm trying to think of that word. I watch a lot of food cooking shows and they do it with ice cream a lot. I can't think of it, but it's okay. So why? Fantastic, thank you so much for asking. So when you utilize brown padding on blonde hair, it's going to give you more depth and dimension within your up style. It's going to give you more depth and dimension in your up style. Think of whenever you're highlighting hair. When you're highlighting, it gives you a highlight, but that depth in there is what makes that highlight pop. So this is going to act like a really big low light, if you will. So what I did was I took dark grips. Where are you at? There you are. And now again, just like we did with the twist in the back, I placed it into the netting, the, the padding on top of the head. And now I'm going to zhuzh it in there because I can't think of a better word. So zhuzh it in there is going to be what it is. Now this is going to give us added volume for whenever we go through and we start piling on that hair. I don't know about you, but every time I find a grip, or excuse me, padding, it comes in a circular case, right? And so like, I don't need all of this to go on top. Like that's a whole lot of padding, right? So here's a little hot tip. Buy the padding, buy the circular padding, then come in here with scissors. These are craft scissors. And just start cutting it open. What you'll find is you can start to unravel it and now you can utilize how much padding you want to have within all of your styles 
and now your dollar is going a little extra further in your upstyle. See how much I got there? So now I can cut this even further. I probably used about this much within this padding here, and now I still have all of this hair, or excuse me, padding to work with on future upstyles. So just a little hot tip on there. Get that out of the way. All right. Come back through. I'm not quite ready for that hair just yet, but I do want to start pinning some of this hair for us. So what's been on trend is a lot of compressing whenever it comes to upstyling, right? Have a ponytail, roll it up, pin it in place. But if you were to think back to 90s upstyles, early 2000 upstyles, it was a lot of grabbing a curl and pinning it in place. Grab a curl, pin it in place. We're going to do a version of that. However, keep it easy and don't use a don't use tiny sections. Go ahead and take bigger sections, but you still want to use a few sections to really get some um, definition in there. All right, but you can see how all that curling has set us up for success and how we're just gonna let that curl talk to us. Coming through with my paddle brush to really start to untangle that hair. And now I can come through here and pick off a little piece. In the back, I wanna use a little bit of bigger sections. So once I have my section, come through with my spray wax, comb it, and now I'm really just going to let that hair talk to me about where it wants to sit. That looks good to me. Coming through with my grip and just pinning it into the hair. Everything at this point, besides these pieces are in front, are in some kind of ponytail. So everything's going to lock in real nice. I'm not going to worry about fluffing it too much uh, until the very end. So come through. Let's divide that. Spray wax going up the hair with the grains of the hair in which they're moving, comb through, and if you need a little bit extra wax, don't be afraid to apply it. And I'm just simply, as I'm doing this, looking in the mirror at the back of the head, at the profile, that looks really good. One of the things that I was super afraid of when I got into upstyling was looking at my client in the mirror. You know, those beady eyes are staring back at you and you're just, your heart's going up because all they can see right now is this, right? And you're doing all that magic back there. But don't be afraid to move your client around in the mirror so you can see what you're doing and how this is all coming together. I watched a video from um, Roger the other week whenever he was doing his 90s inspired Bob and he really used the analogy of building a house. And the same can be said about doing up styles. Right now we're just creating, well we did just do the foundation with our twists and our curls and now we're adding on the walls, right? We're starting to add on the walls. And so the final look won't come together until the very end. That looks good. And again, I just am going to leave this, these tails out and see what happens, right? Don't get so stuck on it has to be a certain way. Sometimes it's nice to just let that hair speak to you of where it wants to live and what art it wants to create. I have this down here that I'm going to pin. Yeah, I'm going to pin that. Grabbing the tails, putting them through the grip, and now I'm just going to pin it up top. Pro 
profile. Looking good. Back. Okay. Profile. Oh, yeah. All right. Now we're going to come through. Moving onward to the front. Where's your face? There it is. If you're with me so far, just go ahead and say, looking good in the comments. Looking good, looking good. All right, here we go. So now I have this section here. This is where her fringe was. So I'm just gonna let it be. If you want to at this point, just randomly pulling a few little smaller pieces out so it doesn't just look like bang, right, or fringe, do that now. It's a lot easier to get it where you want now than pinning everything and then pulling it out because then it's really, thanks y'all, then it's really going to get a little frizzy on us. So go ahead and pull out little pieces now. Come through, wax last, wide tooth comb. I'm going to move this out of my way just ever so slightly so I can see what I'm doing. Wide tooth comb. And again, just give it a little bit of a buckle. Too tight, buckle. See how that just drapes over? And my zigzag partings allow me to have it nice and diffused. So this piece, I'm actually going to pin it into, you can't see it really, but the depth, the padding, right? So I'm going to go ahead and pin this piece into the padding. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. At this point, I can pretty much get rid of that. All right. Wide tooth comb. Separate. If you're going to pull some hair, pull some hair. Let it drape so it's just not fringe. That looks good. Yeah, that looks real good. And again, I'm going to check my guest in front. Do I like how much hair I have draping, right? Keeping this out of my way. That looks good. This might be a little too heavy. Don't be afraid to look at your guests. They bring in inspiration pictures of the back of their head, but guess where they're looking the whole night and taking selfies? Their face. So don't be afraid to look at them and just take your time around the face to get it really where you want it to be. Yeah, I like that. All right. Come through. Comb. In the comments, where am I pl uh, placing this piece into? What am I gripping this piece into? Yeah, I'm gripping it into the padding. The padding is perfect because it has all those little bitty webs in there and that hair is not coming out. Now I'm just going to ever so slightly. If you have too much of a part line showing, just pinch and pull a little bit. Perfect. Ooh, this is looking fantastic so far. Give yourself a little pat on the back sometimes as you're going through this. Upstyling can be a little heavy on the breathing, if you will. <laughs> so don't be afraid to give yourself a little pat on the back as you're going through. All right, so I've been using grips a lot, but now let's go through and I'm going to switch them to open pins. That's one too many that I want to show you. So I'm going to sh switch it to open pins. I have been using grips. Now I'm switching to open pins. The rest of this is all just going to be pinned. This is where that piling on top happens. So piling it high. Take a little bit of hair. Everything is pretty much going to be pinned into 
the uh <laughs> i just had a baby four months ago and mom brain is for real like what i just had that thought lose me it's going to be <laughs> pinned into the padding so i'm just going to boop let those hair those ends just kind of live where they are now i do have this piece still from whenever i pulled this back and these tails are saying that they want to go towards the face so if it's telling me where it wants to live, I'm gonna listen to it. And I'm just gonna pin it right there into the padding. Here we go, let's take another piece. If you have some frizzy bits, use your spray wax. Taking a look in the mirror. These pieces are gonna be super, mm, mm, I shouldn't say super, but they're going to be a little on the skinnier side right now, right? But once you get them into place, you can go through and fluff them out so they get a little fatter, a little wider, a little bit more voluminous. Let's see. I see you ends. And I raise you. All right. So here's my ends here. I have a shorter hair in here within longer hair. No problem. Spray wax, find a pin. Now I'm going to come through here. It's moving towards the face. I'm just going to let it be. Marvelous. I see some ends back here that I'm not, that I might, I'm, I'm going to come back to and address them later. All right. Moving forward, and this is all we're just going to do is we're just going to continue to pile on making the hairs go every which way on top of the head. So the great thing about this ponytail underneath is if I were to just do the twist up the back, I would not have long enough hair to give me all the volume that I want up top. So the ponytail up top, that first section that I showed you is actually going to give us uh, the longer hair to do the piling and the nice, beautiful uh, pieciness. Come through, spray, comb, checking in the volume in the profile, and then coming through and saying, Where do you want to live, my guy? There. Pin it into. the padding. Now I have this little guy. I'm just going to drape it. Really letting that curl that we did at the beginning with our two-in-one one-inch curling iron do most of the talking for me. Now we're just left with our tails. Everything is pinned. Now we're just left with our tails. So if I were to come through here, that looks good. I'm, you can't see my face but I'm just looking at my mannequin the whole time in the mirror, right? Looking at my guests the whole time in the mirror. I want to know where's this hair going to live best. Now we can come through. The tails are the part that tend to get the most frizzy. So using your extra wax, excuse me, spray wax, going through and combing, excuse me, defrizzing them is really going to set you up for success sooner than later. All right, just little detail and pieces. Once you have your walls up, now I like to go say it's going through and adding like the siding and the shingles and the all the jazz that makes the outside of a house look like the outside of the house. And that's just really going to be coming from editing. So now I come through. It's looking a little flat for my liking. So I'm just going to pinch and pull some areas. Where's your head? Pinch and pull. This is the great thing about the pins is that they're not too tight 
that you can't move things around. I like those tails. I'm going to check this profile one more time because this is what I was not so sure of. That looks better. So I'll just tuck it right in there. All right, so profile wise, looking good. Front. Let's give her a little spray wax. Zhuzh. In the back, how are we looking? Oh. If you're liking what you're seeing so far, go ahead and give me, looks fantastic in the comments. This still has some nice organic texture to it. Now, Pamela Anderson was famous in the 90s, right? But I mean, she's making a comeback with that documentary. If you haven't seen it on Netflix, I'm just going to go ahead and plug it. It was great. I loved hearing from her and her alone and not anybody else's version. So she was super popular in the 90s. And what else was super popular in the 90s? Butterfly clips. But we got to jazz it up a little bit. We can't just put butterfly clips in there. I mean, you can if you want to. But I'm just going to come through. And I found these. There they are. At my local store. They were like seven bucks. And now I'm just going to come through and pin a few to give me a little extra pizzazz. A little extra sparkle for their big day. It might be a little hard to see right now, but I promise I'll show you. I'm not doing any extra pinning right now. I'm just putting these into the hair. And there is our final look. If I wanted to, I could come through here with my Sanvia sleeker and just smooth that out a little bit more if it was a little too, I'm getting used to this camera, hang on a second. <laughs> She's just gonna be tilted. If it was a little too curly for their liking, I could just go through with the Sanvia sleeker and just kind of smooth that out. However, I really like how it comes in towards the face and then opens up and pops open around their eyes and cheekbones profile. If there are any questions that you have for me in the comment box, just go ahead and leave those there. But just a little recap. We went through and we prepped the hair with Sam Via's blow dryer and a root lift from Redken. Then we came through with a thermal spray and the two-in-one one-inch curling iron and set our hair into big, thick, chunky sections. Once we did that, we sectioned out the hair with a circle, circular um, ponytail on top of the head with zigzags. Now I'm gonna stop doing two things at once and actually talk to you. <laughs> and then I twisted up the back Draped back the two so uh, the sides, cut them in half, pinned them, started twisting in the back. Then we placed our brown padding. You can see it gives it a little bit more of that depth in there. On top of our ponytail. And then we took the sides that were left over and pulled those back. And this is just another version of what we did, but with on brunette hair and longer here in the front. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me on this beautiful Monday morning. And I hope this gives you a nice kickstart to your week. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jamie. Great education, as always, as you expect here on Sambia. And if you want to continue the education live and hands-on, you can head to sambia.com backslash education to find out more how you can bring the Sambia art team into your salon live and hands-on. 
And if you're a fan of Sambia tools, you can actually make some money through your love of Sambia tools. You can head to Sambia.com to become a Sambia, uh, Sambia affiliate. This gives you a 20% commission on all sales that they use your affiliate code. Plus, whoever uses your affiliate code gets a 10% discount. So awesome for you. Awesome for them. So we will be right here. More information or more education this week and uh, head to the YouTube channel for plenty of pre-recorded content. And of course, follow us on social for more. Talk to you soon and thanks for watching.